In this video, I'm going to discuss Treasury bill investment rates and what they currently reveal about future federal funds rate decisions by the Fed and my general approach to corporate bonds. The three and six month uh, Treasury bill auctions earlier today produced investment rates of 5.388% for the 91 day bill and 5.32% percent for the 180 day bill. I do not view those yields as consistent with a Fed rate cut within six months. I did participate in both auctions. The Fed funds future contracts are currently predicting a 80.2 percent chance of a 25 basis point cut on or before the Fed's June meeting using the CME Fed watch tool on that probability assessment. One month ago, there was a 82.6% probability of at least a 50 basis point cut on or before the June meeting. So one 25 basis point cut has been eliminated in the forecast over the past month. There are two reasons why this is occurring, in my opinion. The last inflation report showed sticky core CPI at a 3.9% annual rate. And the economy is still doing okay with rates as they are now. So there is no pressure on the Fed to lower rates for as long as that continues and inflation remains too high. I'm still forecasting a 25 basis point point cut at the June meeting primarily due to CPI and core CPI, and I, CPI being juiced to the upside by owner's equivalent rent, a phony expense that is weighted near 25% that no one actually pays. I, am, I also participated in today's one-year Treasury bill auction, and the uh, one-year bill was sold at a 4.95% investment rate. That yield is consistent with two 25 basis point cuts, with the first being at the July meeting, possibly at the June meeting. When holding until the bill matures in 2025, the interest will be taxable in 2025. Now I'm going to summarize some bullet points about my corporate bond investment strategy. I do have a meaningful position and Tennessee municipal bonds that pay tax-free interest, but I do not trade those, uh, those bonds, uh, but have experienced some early calls uh, from issuers. I have 15 general obligation bonds issued by the AAA-rated Williamson County, uh, Tennessee, uh, that I own that are about to be called. I live in that county, and, and the city where I live also has a AAA credit rating, as does the county seat of Franklin and my state of Tennessee. For corporate bonds, I am buying now only investment-grade corporate bonds. I will read at least one bond rating before buying. Fidelity has links to the Moody's reports, those reports can also be accessed at Moody's website after registering with it. Fitch reports uh, are available at its re website without registering. I will also read uh, the last earnings report before buying a bond. I will look at earnings projections and other financial uh, data to reach a independent opinion about credit worthiness in addition to the opinion reached by the credit agencies. Based on that information gathering process, I will make a decision on what my maximum exposure to one issue will be. For corporate bonds, the maximum is $10,000 per issuer, but my assessment of the credit risk may lower the maximum amount by several thousand dollars. I'm now focused on the short end of the maturity curve where I pick up most of the yield. The Tennessee municipal bonds are my potentially long-term bond exposures. Even while focusing on one to three year maturities, I will stagger maturities within that range. 
from a particular issuer. An example is a recent purchase of a laboratory corporation, the stock symbol is LH. 3.6% SU bond that matures on 2.125, which I bought at a total cost of 98.34. The YTM, which includes the coupon yield and the quote profit unquote when the bond matures, was 5.413%. I'm starting to invest in longer dated LH bonds which with proceeds that I expect to receive from four that mature on, on September 1st, 2024. LH and Quest Diagnostics are the two dominant lab test companies in the U.S. and I'm comfortable owning up to 10 bonds is issued by both. At least at the moment I am. Everything is always subject to change based on subsequent uh, developments, but I do not currently anticipate a, a chance of a default with either of those two companies. Another factor to assess is what the price and yield tells me about whether bond investors agree with the current ratings. I will at least take that into account. For BBB-rated bonds maturing in about a year, YTMs would generally be a 0.4 to 0.6% spread of the Treasury yield. A bond that is uh, rated BBB with a 1% spread would, co would consequently indicate a cons consensus disagreement among bond investors that the uh, Credit risk is at a BBB level, more like a would be more like a BB minus or even a high grade junk rating. Uh, so last year, uh, the the spreads were at times three to five percent higher on regional bank SUB bonds and similarly rated bonds from other types of issuers. And that was based on the fears generated by the bank failures earlier in, earlier in uh, 2023. Uh, spreads for business development uh, corporations and REITs will be higher than those so, than similarly rated bonds maturing at about the same time from non-pass-through entities. Both the BDC and the REITs pay out most of their cash flow and common dividends as pass-through entities where income is not taxed at the corporate level. Consequently, they are viewed as more risky given their payouts to common shareholders.